All right, we get a chance to sit down with Blues President of Hockey Operations and General Manager Doug Armstrong. The trade deadline has come and gone, and your team has standed. Pat, Doug, uh, your philosophy going in, and why did you stand Pat today? Uh, well, we were uh, taking phone calls and, and making phone calls, and at the end of the day, uh, uh, our recent play had put us in a spot where uh, uh, we, didn't, we didn't make any moves. Obviously, the Blues have three unrestricted free agents this summer, including Scandella. Bucinavich's name was um, public for the last couple of weeks. Did you take a lot of calls on those players? Uh, yeah, I don't want to get into speculation of what, what uh, people are uh, reporting or making up or whatever, however they're getting it. But, uh, you know, it's a time of year where, where teams talk about all sorts of different uh, uh, people and players. Doug, obviously you have a lot of conversation. All teams do. do sometimes... Uh, uh, conversations that don't lead to deals perhaps lead to deals down the road yeah that's happened quite a bit in my uh, tenure you, you you start to talk and all of a sudden you you keep your notes and you get to the draft and something may pop itself up or you hear what other player or people may have done and uh, there are a lot of trades have made today and uh, there's going to be some great first round matchups of of teams that have uh, spent a lot of assets and uh, the reality is is af after the the first uh, 12 or 13 days, eight teams are going home, and some of them spent a lot of assets to get here. We, we've been in that spot in the past, too, and uh, uh, so I think at the draft, everything will be settled in, and we're looking at a new year, and uh, we'll see what, what comes up at that point. But, yeah, there's, there's a lot of conversations now that, that you do keep in the back of your mind. Doug, you had said uh, before the season began that you expected the team to contend for a playoff spot, a wild card spot. You are contending. You're only six points yeah. out. Are they about where you thought they would be right now? Uh, yeah, I thought we, yes, I guess if I, if I said we hope to be contending and we are, we are in that spot, I think, uh, uh, you know, as, as the season goes on, you have ebbs and flows. Uh, uh, we put ourselves in a really good uh, spot heading into the All-Star break. Coming out, we won two games and then, uh, you know, quite honestly, we, the, the, bot, the bottom has fallen out recently and we have to find a way to, to cauterize that and, and to start playing better hockey. Uh, uh, right now, the, the the situation I thought really turned our season in a negative was that uh, Nashville game when I think we were four points up with two games in hand, had to them at home, and uh, they were able to gain, gain a spark from that and uh, have gone on, I think, maybe losing one game in overtime or, or anyways, they have a heck of a record and yeah. we don't. And that really gave us an opportunity to, to put some distance and they... They found them positive momentum out of that game, and, and we quite honestly haven't, uh, haven't bottomed out since that game, and we have to if we want to uh, get back in this race. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what would it take to overcome the deficit and perhaps be a playoff team? Well, maybe to flip uh, the next 10 games with Nashville. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, you know, as I said, we, we were, we were uh, comfortably in a, in a comfortable spot with them with games in hand, and uh, uh, to their credit, they've gone on a, on a nice uh, winning streak. Uh, I think Seattle had an eight-game winning streak earlier in the year. You know, it's an ebbs and flow league, and right now we have to find, we can't worry about what other teams do. We have to start winning games. We obviously have difficult games coming up, but uh, if you can't beat difficult teams, you don't deserve to get in anyways. So we have to find a way to to play play strong hockey and find a way to get points in these games, and then you know just take it one day at a time. Uh, one thing we do have most nights uh, or almost every night is really good goaltending and when you start with that it uh, gives you an opportunity. We just have to to follow that up with, with good play around them. Doug I don't need to tell you but you know five on five scoring for the Blues this year especially the last couple of months has been a challenge. How can they score more five on five goals and give those goaltenders more of a break? Well I, I think that our, our shot volume is in the lowest in the league and our pucks towards the net are in the lowest to the league and I know it's something that's been <laughs> uh, preached on by two different head coaches now is that getting pucks to the net and you have to go into the hard areas and when we do it uh, we've had success and then for some reason we we want to start playing east-west and, and, and pass up shots and uh, uh, probably play a little bit outside our skill level uh, thinking there's a better play to be made when there isn't. And uh, you look at the teams now that, that have successes, they, they play direct from a certain part of the ice. And, and when we play like that, we're successful. And we don't, uh, we don't produce offense. Doug, certainly a positive that you re-signed Oscar Sundquist, the, the Swede, to a two-year deal the other day. Uh, why was it important to get him locked in for two more? 
Uh, well, Sunny's uh, obviously been a big part of our organization uh, uh, for a number of years and a couple different times, and, and getting him back uh, uh, was was good. Uh, when I when I look at that line of uh, Sunquist, Torpachenko, and Walker, probably our, our our most complete line every night for what they asked him to do. They very rarely is the variance from a, a great game to a poor game different. Uh, and I think that that uh, is, is a positive effect on our team. Uh, Sonny loves St. Louis too, and that's uh, uh, something that you can't take for granted. Someone that wants to be here, wants to be the fabric of our community. Uh, but most importantly, he has to do it on the ice. And I think having the surgeries that he's had and coming back and being healthy, and then also being wanting to be a, a part of the solution, it became a no-brainer uh, when he and I got together on, on uh, uh, whether we would uh, move a player like that along at the deadline there, there certainly I assume would have been interested in him because he's he's won championships and, and played in championship games uh, whether it's in Sweden or with Pittsburgh here a couple of times with, and then with us and uh, so uh, I we just thought it was best to keep that type of talent and that type of character and that type of uh, uh, leadership in our room. Finally Doug obviously the Blues have a lot of prospects at a ton of the world juniors uh, Zach Dean's in the minors. We see Bulldog up with the club. You had three first rounders last year. You have your first rounder this year. I guess the question is, how soon for Blues fans can we expect this young core, the next generation of Blues, to help turn the ship around, if you will? Yeah, they're, they're not going to come all in at once. Uh, I, I think that uh, what we've seen is growth in our younger players. That's one of the things I wanted to see this year, or we wanted to see as an organization. Uh, Jake Neighbors has, has had a good year. Uh, Scotty Prunovic now is healthy and is, is getting an opportunity on a nightly basis. Uh, Bull Duke is up now. Uh, Kessel's been up. And I think uh, we're going to probably see Dean at some point too. So we're going to keep interjecting these younger players as we go. I think first round picks or players drafted in uh, 2023, you're, you know, you're, we're going to have to stay patient. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you, there's an actuary table that we use or that we've created when they, uh, you slot a player in from his position and, and when he likely play his 11th game, 50th game, 100th game, and that's usually a few years. So yeah, right. uh, we're excited to have these guys, but we, uh, we know that, it, that to, to get them to be good players over the long haul, we're going to have to work with them and be patient and, and let them progress. Doug, thanks for this. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, Doug Armstrong.